Okay. So, um, uh, this is a DevOps uh, talk and uh, this is going to be completely on, on database and uh, um, this is based on a case, actually a case study which I have done. So, I had, I had uh, some specific data which we were actually, actually working in Nokri and we, we, we actually wanted it to be stored somewhere for our analytical, analytics purposes. That I'm, I'm not saying that that data was having a social media kind of relationship with each other, but we were not sure that how our relationship gonna be in the future. Like we, we didn't, we didn't had a specific schema from the beginning, and we wanted it to put somewhere, store some fashion, so that it can be retrieved as fast as possible. So in that process, I realized that uh, not everything can fit in rows and columns, and then we discovered that how. So I'll be talking about those specific problems and challenges which I faced over there, and uh, how how I have solved them uh, in a context. Okay, so. Uh, let me set the agenda first. So I'll talk about relational data, uh, what the data is supposed to be, and 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 how the relation uh, are actually there. And we'll talk about a little bit about graph databases, uh, what are there, and and how they are uh, 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 helpful in uh, helpful. We'll talk about uh, dgraph, uh, which I found as a solution uh, when I was dealing with my experiment. And I also talk about dgraph ORM, which I have created uh, because of certain reasons. Uh, so, so what exactly a relational data is? Uh, uh, the relational data, as per my opinion, is uh, it's uh, it's a data where a relation is also equally important as the data itself. And if you see uh, the way industry is moving and the way we are dealing with our data these days, we are having more metadata compared to the data we have. Like we store one specific information, which is our core data, and then around that we store a cloud of information. What uh, which uh, which I'm calling a metadata, and these metadata is related to exact the data which we had, and that creates uh, creates a relationship which can go anywhere from uh, uh, from one place to another, and and these relationship which I'm talking about can be one to one, uh, which we've seen in in one to one, one to many, or many to many, which we've seen in in RDBMS in general. So. Let's take some specific data. So suppose uh, this is uh, a movie data, uh, which have so I have a list of movies, I have a list of directors, and I have lists of lists of genres. Okay, and uh, in the experiment, what we'll do is we'll try to put this data and try to create a schema and try to put it RDBMS and MySQL, uh, RDBMS and and NoSQL, and see what those sort of challenges we can uh, pretty much find over there. So if we, if I, if I ask you to create a schema for that specific data, your first approach would be exactly this one. Like you can create a movie table, you can put your director and your genre into two separate tables, and then you have a foreign key where you can link in that particular particular context. But you might realize later that a single movie can have multiple director. Okay, and in that scenario, what you need to do is you need to migrate your movie table. Now you have to introduce. One another table to keep your uh, 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 movie and director relationship the way it, uh, uh, the way it's needed, and similarly, as, uh, and the same thing you had to do on genre as well because one specific movie can have can belongs to multiple multiple genre. So uh, if you see the this challenge, like uh, 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 initially we were not aware of this particular problem, and and later on we figure it out on the way building that application or maybe that product which we're trying to build. So, so, so the learning from this is uh, RDMS forces us to fix on uh, on the schema which we have. Like we need to decide our schema beforehand, before we can explore our product that how it can grow and how it can build. We need to decide that how our how our data can can be stored. Uh, because because joins are costly, so we we tend to duplicate the data the way we want. Like we can store some of data into some 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 specific table and they can reduce the join required in that particular relationship schema and uh, uh, we also have very complex mapping process like the third table which, which which we have created that have only one specific job it's going to store two ids for two different tables it, it it nothing have to do with anything else and that specific table is is the adding uh, is the added complexity complexity in the whole schema now every time you have to uh, you are actually trying to access some information from the parent table. You have to join this table, and the table belongs to to the other table to get the whole whole specific set of data. And most of the time, what we do is because counts are something where we do our filters and sorting. 
we tend to pre-compute the counts in, in RDVMS and that pre-computation is completely done through our application logic. So, so we have to maintain that specific, specific logic somewhere in, a, in our application. So let us do the same thing in NoSQL and, and see. So this is, this is how uh, a movie document is supposed to look like. You are going to have a movie information into that, you are going to have your director information and in the same you have your uh, 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 genre information. This seems very uh, uh, interesting when you only have to fetch the information, but think about a director information is updated. Now you have to go find out that director in all the movies and then update that director information and then you are going to save it. So that is actually very hard to maintain. So, so to solve that problem what we can do is we can split this into two specific table uh, and we can keep the IDs similarly we, we did in, in RDVMS. But we cannot join these three tables to, to actually get the data. So ultimately, uh, so ultimately what is going to happen is uh, we are going to have to run n plus m plus 1 queries internally to get whole set of information for one single movie where n is the number of genre it have and m is the number of director it is going to have depending on uh, how, how it is going to be. So, so what actual problems we have in, in NoSQL is the first thing it does it kills the relationship like we cannot maintain the relationship the, the way we can maintain the relationship in, in actually RDVMS. So if, if your data is not, if your data is does not have any, any sort of relationship, maybe NoSQL can be a little bit helpful over there. We do need, we, we do uh, do the data duplication in NoSQL as well, like uh, as you have seen that the director uh, information I am uh, actually copying from every specific, every specific movie document. And similarly, uh, um, the other challenges like ACID, security and all those specific things which we have talked about MySQL and the community is, is, is still there, sorry NoSQL is, is still there. So what the solution is be? Uh, so the solution seems, seems graph databases. Why? Because, because they are sparse in schema, like they do not force us to define the schema in the beginning. Our schema can be defined the way our data is being stored automatically like we just start storing our data building the relationship and the schema is going to be created in the background. We do not have to worry about schema at all. No data duplication because now we are going to store our data into a form of node and indices where indices is going to be relation of these nodes and nodes going to have one individual, uh, actually one individual object or, or one individual values. Uh, any join in single lookup because because in the graph what is happens is you are not actually pointing to an index you are pointing to actual data. So you do not have to go in an index table to figure it out where that data is going to be you just directly have that data accessible you just uh, go through one specific a specific as as cell and you get that particular information. Counts are very cheap because you exactly know that how many as are related to that particular node which you are currently in and you can count all those specific related nodes if you want to. So count is also very cheap. So graph database seems uh, uh, to solve all the problem which we have then, then why it is not being used? It is not being used, okay, uh, okay I think uh, I just missed one slide. So this is like if I just change that movie data into an actual relationship format it is pretty much looks like a graph, no? Like this, so the graph would be the best way to represent that data and store that data. If, if, if we convert that relationship with the data which we had and it is become a graph, why we cannot store that data into, into specifically a graph? And the reason being that is because with the graph databases there are some myths. The first myth is everybody thinks that it is an overkill. Like we, we, we are just going to have a very minimum relationship in our databases. Do we really need that kind of infrastructure and that kind of time and effort to be invested? The second myth which, which I uh, and second question which I thought of found every, uh, every time is like are they robust? Can I use them as a, as a my primary databases because most of the graph solution which I have seen are completely built on top of any other specific databases and they are just simply graph layers rather than having a complete, complete graph databases. Scalability is also a concern because the data, the, the most popular graph databases in the market as of now they do not scale the way it is supposed to be like the way we can scale MySQL, the way we can scale MongoDB, scalability always become, uh, always been an issue in, uh, in graph databases. So the, the question to those specific, uh, uh, 
the the answer to those specific questions are pretty simple like uh, uh, the way i have experienced and explore graph databases i found it not an overkill because uh, getting up and setting up was very easy it was uh, it took me around just 5 to 10 minutes to get started with a graph database instance, uh, instance and i was able to create schema and do our basic uh, 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 insert and uh, insert and query operation over there uh, uh, they can act as uh, act as your primary database because the one uh, which i'm going to talk about here is is not a graph layer it's a complete graph database so you have your storage system you have your cluster management system and stuff like that and the third thing uh, 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 are they scalable so uh, the 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 graph database which are which which we'll be talking here is is scalable by default like you cannot have one single instance uh, 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 by default to to actually create the whole cluster of uh, of uh, of that database by architecture it's divided into two three groups and that scale internally itself so and and these are the problems which i talk about uh, uh, about the current current graph database like if you if you see uh, neo 4j neo 4j is single server architecture you can have one specific graph layer you need to put a mammoth machine to support a larger data set and similarly uh, the other database like kali titan db and dsc graph are, are are not the graph databases but the graph layer so you need to have a mysql or mongodb where your source of truth lives and then then these specific layers gonna pick information from that and convert it convert it into graph in the memory and similarly uh, in the industry there is no such standard uh, like we can't have uh, we, we don't have standard like uh, we have in rdb uh, rdbms and and no sql uh, uh, in uh, specifically in graph databases so that's why every specific company have created their own graph database and graph layers like uh, Google have knowledge graph, Facebook have Facebook Tau, Twitter have FlockDB, and so any specific company you name it, if, if, if a company is doing anything smart, they use some sort of graph solution because that's how it's going to be, uh, 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 actually that's how they can achieve the performance they want. So let's meet dgraph. Uh, uh, what dgraph is, uh, it's, a, it's an open source transactional distributed, distributed graph database which is completely written in Go. Uh, you can go on dgraph.io to check it more feature. The features, uh, the features for dgraph is, is fairly simple. It's fast. It's actually built like search engine. Uh, the, the, the founder of, uh, of dgraph is, uh, is ex-Google. So he was working in their uh, specific search engine team and he had created the whole specific solution uh, in the beginning and now it's it's a community project and they have an enterprise solution as well uh, it supports distributed joins filters and sort like if your data is sitting on multiple nodes you can filter by them you can join them and 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 get a complete data set uh, data set the, the way you want it's it's horizontally scalable because you can have your data uh, sharded or distributed in multiple nodes the way you want and it's consistent uh, because uh, it uses raft internally for hr application uh, and it's also highly available and fault tolerant by nature like the way uh, they have architected uh, the the dgraph it's fault tolerant and uh, uh, it's it's actually highly available so we did a benchmark uh, that how it's perform against two famous graph databases uh, in the market uh, the one is neo4j and the other is kali and, and, and these are the results. Uh, so when it comes to data loading uh, 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 and compared to Neo4j, dgraph is 100 times faster. Like if you have one terabyte of data uh, and you wanted to load into a graph, uh, it's, it, it, it's similarly 100x faster when it's compared to Neo4j. And when, you are, and when we have started querying to that particular data, uh, that was six, uh, three to six times faster. Because the way uh, storage happens in Neo4j, uh, they have the predicates information in there, and 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 the way storage happens in in dgraph, they 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 have the UID structure. We'll talk uh, more about the data modeling section of dgraph. And similarly, uh, uh, similarly, we we see we have seen improvements uh, uh, in uh, in actually comparison with Kali as well. These two benchmarks is published. Uh, one is done by internally internally dgraph team, and one is done by uh, from community itself so these two links are there you can go and check 
the more uh, details are details around that. Uh, the the D-graph architecture is fairly simple. Uh, you have one zero layer. Uh, that zero layer can be one or can be uh, can be multiple depending on your need. And this is and and this is the zero zero level group which actually manage your your cluster. Like how many clusters you have, how many storage engine you have. This is all managed by your your zero. And then you have an alpha layer. That alpha layer is actual storage storage layer which talks to your. Uh, uh, your cluster layer for information that where should be putting what uh, and other specific stuff. Uh, and, and this whole, con uh, and these two things conclude your dgraph cluster. But there is one other thing which is called rattle. Rattle is an UI specific application which lets you interact with uh, your dgraph cluster. Like you can have one specific rattle and behind that you can create a multiple, multiple cluster system of, cluster system of your dgraph. And this uh, and this lets you get uh, information like how many predices you have created, how many UIDs they have generated, what the current UID is running, what sort of data available in those specific predices and those specific uh, those specific uh, uh, UIDs. The data modeling in DGraph is you have UIDs which generates automatically. You don't have any control on that. You have predices which you can define what sort of key you want for your uh, specific values to be stored. And then you have values which can be your specific specific values. If you, if you see in this particular example, uh, every, uh, 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 I mean the UID 0x1 which is a binary number uh, uh, have, have, a, have a predices called director.name and then I am signing Stephen, Stephen into that particular, particular name. Uh, so this, a combination of this UID and this predices is going to become a key for our uh, actual graph engine stories uh, and these values can be single or multiple like you can have an array of data stored to one single single predices as well. The query language in graph uh, actually in dgraph is very interesting. Uh, uh, we, we, we needed some sort of uh, some sort of query language to query the recursive uh, upper, uh, the recursive approach of uh, of the graph, uh, 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 and and we we, just th we thought of creating a new query language, but but we uh, we end up using using GraphQL. So, uh, 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 how many of you are familiar with GraphQL? Okay, so so the thing which I liked about uh, about GraphQL is that it 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 lets you query uh, recursively. Okay, like you can query one part and then another part and another part and so on. So it's an you can form a, a recursive approach of querying information, and that is how a graph query language is supposed to be. So we pick the D, uh, we pick the graph query language, uh, uh, which is which is GraphQL, and then added some information and removed re re removed some information. And as of now, we are calling it GraphQL plus minus. But yeah, we can come up a, a good name later. What it does, it's completely inspired by GraphQL. Uh, uh, it uh, and it's actually modified for better database support because. The, the GraphQL is completely built to query data only, not to query databases like functions and other support is not there. You only have one specific mutations and query to be done using, using GraphQL. But this is, uh, but there is more like you can implement filter, you can implement uh, uh, indexes and, and stuff like that. And we are trying to uh, build our, our uh, uh, GraphQL plus minus somehow to support completely completely GraphQL because that's uh, more familiar and there are lots of clients available to that. But but I don't know how much time that's going to take. Uh, if you want to play with uh, this GraphQL plus minus, uh, you can go on play.dgraph.io and you can have uh, a playground which we have set so, uh, actually set up for you. So uh, uh, how, uh, how easy it is to get started with dgraph? Like we have Docker system, you can just run one specific command and your cluster is ready. Similarly, if you do on Mongo or MySQL, so it's not it's not a hectic job to set up a graph layer, and and there are binaries too available for Linux, Mac, and Windows. You can uh, go and install them uh, the way you want. So uh, this is what I really liked about about dgraph. Like I don't have to go and figure it out. Uh, a lot of dependencies about graph layers, getting an understanding that how it works. And 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 then I can go start and build and invest time into into our into our graph layer or maybe graph database. Like I just like I might have tried out MySQL. I can try it out this particular database database over there as well. And the schema is fairly simple. Although it's completely optional, you can create a schema beforehand, or you want your uh, or you start inserting your data. 
and this schema will generate automatically. So if we take that previous example which we have did in uh, uh, RDBMS and, and NoSQL, this is the schema which we will be creating in, in dgraph. Like you have uh, one indices called director.name which is going to be a type of string. I am just indexing it with exact and full text. We have trigram, uh, term and other indexes as well on string which help you to pull, uh, put regex to actually match the information and stuff like that. And similarly the other fields. If you see that movie the director and movie dot genre, these are UIDs. What UIZ does, it, it does not have a value but you have a, a UID which points to exactly to, to, to the next data. So that is where the relationship, uh, <laughs> relationship actually forms. And if we want to add data into, in, into the system, it is fairly simple, you just define, uh, uh, so this, this uh, uh, underscore colon Steven uh, is actually a UID which we are referring through a variable and this is going to be uh, used as in uh, reference internally into the whole query. So this whole query insert, insert the, uh, this single query insert the whole information of that particular, uh, that particular one movie like uh, Twilight Zone uh, which have uh, director Steven and which is, uh, have, have move as, as horror and then uh, you see that these three UIDs is generated 0x1, 0x2 and 0x3. And Internally, this is how our current data set going to look like. I have one node which is UID 0x1 uh, which going to have a, 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 a indices called director.name and its value is Stephen, uh, Stephen Spielberg. And then there would be another, uh, another value uh, which going to be UID 0x2 where I am storing, uh, storing our genre. And similarly, we have our, our movie uh, uh, specific node where I am uh, just in, uh, uh, actually storing its name and its year because these two are the actual values and then director and, and the genre are actually actually the relationship that's we calling indices. So these two gonna go over there. And then uh, if, you, if you want to query all the data into a JSON format, uh, this is the very simple query which, is, which looks similar to, similar to GraphQL that how it's supposed to be. But, but there are a few things like those functions things you see that is added into, into, the, into the GraphQL system. And other thing is pretty much similar and I have also, yeah, and, and, and if you can look closely, I have also using aliasing over there. Like the name gonna, the movie dot name become name and the movie dot year become year in the actual data and you see that particular information over there. So the problem was when I started with this specific, uh, uh, specific thing, I was working with Node.js, okay. And uh, this, is a this was completely new thing for me. Like I have never worked on RDVF uh, system. I have never worked out that how RDVF works. And uh, uh, this system, this, 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 this graph QL was fine, but this graph QL plus minus was the thing which I was struggling with. So I thought, why can't we have something similar to SQLite, something similar to uh, something similar to Mongoose uh, uh, and other other D, uh, other ORM which we have uh, in the market for Node.js? And here it is. I have created my own, like that's the graph ORM. So so what it does is, uh, I've just uh, it's I've simplified that how schema creation happens, how you can run a query, how you can run a mutation. And it's it's fairly uh, uh, it's heavily uh, uh, inspired by uh, inspired by SQLize and and Mongoose, and internally it uses dgraph.js, which is the official library of dgraph for Node.js connector for Node.js client, uh, and you can find it out on the, that particular link. So that schema which I've shown you earlier, uh, that schema becomes this in in your Node.js. You import your dgraph, you create a new schema, you define what schema going to look like, you put all those properties and stuff like that and then you generate a model out of it. And that model and that will generate internally this particular thing, uh, this particular RDF notation of that schema and that schema will be run internally through internally on dgraph. Similarly, uh, uh, when you are trying to create a movie, uh, this is how you can do, uh, I mean this is just the movie snip stop, your, I mean director and, and genre you have created earlier and that was 0x1 and 0x2 ID which you have got, you, I'm just re, uh, actually having a, a less snippet compass to actually just to fit the screen uh, and this is how, how the actual, actual data will be generated for uh, 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 dgraph.js internally. And similarly when you are actually querying, 
So in graph what happens is uh, you cannot just query select star, okay. You need to define one root node by which you can start your traversal. That is how graph works. So if you, if you see in this example what it actually doing is I am just providing directly a UID, okay. Like uh, this is the UID and you can go and then I can finding all those relationships related to that. But you don't have these UID all the time. So graph, dgraph have given you many ways to find the root node like you can query from equal like you can define one value which is equals to one indices. You can find using trigram like okay these are the three values I don't know which value gonna be but, but pretty much find out what value exactly it is. And then uh, there is a regex pattern match like you can give a, re a regex to find out your root node. Or you can have a, a, a greater than equals to on, on, on various data types. It also supports geo, uh, geo coordinates as of now. So you can do uh, like just give me uh, all the users which is near 200 kilometers from this specific, uh, uh, specific coordinates and stuff like that. So all those things is already implemented over there and it's, it's fairly available. You can go and check. And this is generated the same function uh, which we had uh, earlier in our uh, in our dgraph system. So who is using dgraph? So there are lots of clients using their enterprise version and we can't just reveal their name as if now because there are some specific things they have signed to them. But there are two open source project which started happens uh, uh, very early. The one is uh, started by Intuit which is Catalyst and they are internally using dgraph as in, as in the graph layer. And the other one is uh, another one, uh, one was from VMware uh, where they have created a new uh, tool called Purser and they are using completely uh, uh, dgraph as in database over there. So what the takeaways uh, from this particular talk? Uh, the first thing is don't scare with graph databases, use them, try them, play with them and then figure it out either they are uh, stripping down some of your application logic to, 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 to the database or not. Either they are very helpful to maintaining any sort of relationship, complex or minimal. And uh, 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 they can be used as a, as a primary database like we think about uh, 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 MySQL or maybe, maybe MongoDB these days. Uh, they scale in no time so you don't have to worry about scaling them because I, as I mentioned in the architecture you have zero and you have rattle. These two things you require in a single cluster and that can be one and can be multiple so you can distribute or maybe scale your graph system in no time. They have better performance. Uh, I'm not saying in terms of only 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 the complex logic stuff but if you if you just have to store this this movie information which is very minimum relationship data which which I, which I could have think uh, actually thought of and uh, and and when we were trying to put it on on RDVMS or NoSQL we have certain challenges and we and to overcome those challenges we have to uh, write lots of code in our applications uh, application and, and 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 we know that our next day our product manager gonna come and say okay now we are changing this particular thing to that because our data is going to have another data into that and and and, and, and stuff like that so those thing uh, earlier earlier those things were not that a big problem because we were brainstorming enough and we were not having that much uh, uh, changes in in the system in terms of data but these days the way we are storing data and we are actually consuming data the data changes on a very rapid fashion so we need to think of somewhere to uh, put that particular changes and and, and build solution around uh, in a faster fashion. And similarly like getting started with dgraph is, is fairly easy like uh, the, 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 the docker thing made it as simple as you could have started with uh, MongoDB or maybe uh, 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 MySQL. Here are some references uh, what can be found where like uh, and this and this dgraph ORM is also available on NPM so if if you want to try it out uh, it's there and uh, I think I think this slide is also going to be available to you after after the talk on on, on, on that particular place only and these are the links of documentation uh, their uh, structure architecture and and stuff like that. Thank you any questions? So uh, my question is like, uh, for example, if I have a uh, like node at uh, edge, right, at any of the layer, right, like in the graph, if we say the root node, it can lie down the tree, right. 
so for example if you are trying to query or like from the director name right the director name is stephen so uh, what was the time it took right just to query that particular name so if uh, so uh, if you go on play.dgraph.io as of now the movie data is already available there we have kind of stripped down the imdb on a certain label and that's put that data over there and if you see like uh, uh, the data set which I had, so I was building uh, one specific uh, application uh, using dgraph where we are querying our user analytical data. So in, in, in Nokia.com what happens is we, we store a lot of information from the user side like where they are moving from one page to another, how they are clicking, how their whole behavior is happens. We are storing that information in 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 a, in a, an, an ominous fashion and, uh, and that data as of now is around the uh, 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 13, 230 gigabytes of, of data as of now and if I have to query one specific node which which is most typically like just get me all the mouse clicks so that I can plot a heat map or stuff like that. That took around uh, uh, 120 or 130 milliseconds in, 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 in the whole operation. If, uh, if I am querying it right from the same cluster and then there would be some network call if I am calling it from a different way. So. That sort of speed which we have over there. Okay, uh, so I just have an idea, right? What if we do that? We uh, like, for example, if uh, we would like to query, so there are cases, right? So like, you can do this kind of a query, exact match query on the director name, right? Yeah. If you create uh, create a kind of index of it, right, with the node IDs, like you told, like you can have zero, one, x one, right? Yeah. With the names, right, in a RDBMS kind of a fashion, right? And over there, you can have where you just do a perfect match and then just search that node with that node id yeah the implementation can be in very ways like you can you, you can use redis to just map your director name and your uh, yeah. and your uids but but uh, in general uh, uh, because because internally it uses indexes on on those specific values it's have that kind of similar fashion you get in rdbms or maybe nosql because they also use indexer on values but if you directly have uids they perform fairly better compared to a, compared to these two databases but, but when you have that kind of match like if, 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 if you are going to use trigram which is a regex match for your specific string values then it is going to be a, 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 a little bit difficult because you are now you have to deal with a very complex indexing system internally. So that is the one thing. So you have to be, be very care, little bit careful that what sort of indexes you are applying to what sort of values.